Hi, I'm Habiba Nosheen. I'm the co-host of The Fifth Estate. And this is uh, Timothy Sawa, our producer um, on our recent documentary, The Inside Man, uh, which essentially told the story of an undercover FBI agent behind the Via Rail plot. And we're here to answer questions that were sent to us by you. A 26-year-old grad student in engineering, originally from Tunisia, he was known for his anger against America. Agent Al Nuri says when he meets Abbasi, alarm bells go off. One of the people we heard from was actually Mr. Ahmed Abbasi, who is um, one of the uh, people, one of the subjects that we discussed in our documentary. Um, and he had some concerns. He felt that, uh, you know, that we gave the undercover agent um, an interview in our story, um, which essentially, I, th I think it's fair to say, he kind of didn't like. Um, because I, I think from having spoken to him on the phone um, a couple of times, he feels like that perspective is only what gets out and not his perspective. And, and um, I wonder if you had any thoughts on that. For sure. I mean, I think we took uh, what we thought were some great pains to make sure his story was part of this story. I think it was important to us to tell his story. He is an important part of this story. And we speak to his lawyer, of course. And of course, we offered him a chance to speak in the, in the interview as well. Um, we were all set up, in fact, to interview him in Tunisia when he changed his mind and decided he didn't want to participate. Um, and if I understand, he didn't want to participate when he um, r realized that it wasn't going to be just an interview with him, but in fact it was going to be part of a larger documentary which would include the undercover agent as well. That's right. I mean, and the way we generally work is uh, we don't talk about sort of the other people we're going to interview when we set out to do a story. Um, so in the same sense, if the FBI had asked us who else are we going to interview, we wouldn't necessarily have told them. So I understood, I understand he was surprised by that, but it is just how we work. Um, and I hope in the end he thinks we did a fair job. The agent might not like what he was hearing, but there was nothing illegal about Abbasi's angry rants. And despite many attempts by Agent Al Nuri, Abbasi never agrees to carry out a plot. Sabrina Shroff is Ahmed Abbasi's lawyer based in New York. Everybody knows my client was entrapped. Any fool who just hears this story on the street would turn around and say to my client, damn, you're a dumbass for getting caught up in this. It's obvious. So we have another question um, that was emailed to us from Richard uh, Kortmas. And he says, the FBI agent was totally credible. Too bad the Canadian authorities did not want to pursue, thereby leaving terrorist Abbasi free to act someday. His defense lawyer's arguments were irrational. Thoughts? This is Mr. Kortmas's perspective, obviously. Um, I think the FBI agent is credible. I think that's, I don't think people would disagree with that. And they, he had a job to do and he comes at this from a certain perspective. Um, and I think he, he says himself that he was very disappointed that the so-called American sleeper got away. And I, th I don't think anyone wants to think that there's people out there who could have been caught, who didn't get caught. Um, uh, on, in terms of the lawyer's arguments, um, I mean, she's playing a role, right? Her, her job is to defend Mr. Abbasi. And that's her job, and she did it in the story. And also, you know, j just to point out, um, this person does call Mr. Abbasi a terrorist, and as we point out in the story, um, Mr. Abbasi has actually not been um, convicted of any terrorism charges anywhere in the world. So um, that's just. Mm -hmm. You're right. Yeah, we make that point. We also have a question from William Olin, another, f another question by email, and he asks, you would think that Al-Qaeda would have done a background check on the undercover agent to vet him. Seems they did nothing in that regard. It's not as if they, Al-Qaeda, have never had any reason to suspect anyone wants to stop them. I think there's some, some, uh, uh, some sarcasm there. Yeah, so that's, that's actually interesting. Maybe it maybe didn't come through fully in, in our documentary, but certainly we talked um, in great detail with the undercover um, agent, if you recall, um, where he talked about the fact that, in fact, he assumed, and he, the FBI assumes till this day, that the Al, that Al Qaeda did in fact vet him, and that why that's why it was really important to the FBI uh, that whatever narrative they're putting out, whatever whatever kind of person, um, legend as they call yeah, it, yeah, yeah, right? that that um, undercover agent um, 
uh, Tamaral Nuri is pretending to be, that it's fully vetted um, to the point that if someone who has access to some kind of records looks him up, they're not going to say, oh, no person was born on that day. Right. Um, so they're right. coverable. It, it, so what their response to us was essentially that, no, it has to um, withstand that kind of checking from right. anybody in the world. Yeah. yeah. And they went into, I think, great pains to the, to the extent where they said they had someone ready to answer a phone from his business card, from his so-called office where he worked. They had uh, they had records created that were put out publicly online that showed he was buying and selling property. So I think they took some extreme measures to make sure that if he was vetted by Al Qaeda, that it would check out. How much of Tamar al Nuri is really inspired by who you really are? All of it, every bit of it, except for uh, the radical element. The best legends, the best undercover personas are the ones that are closest to who you really are. Hmm. And that's your, that's your best bet because it's hard to mess up you. We have a question uh, from Facebook from David Gagnon, and he wants to know, how do we know if the plot wasn't, I think, orchestrated by the undercover agent rather than him just simply foiling it? Right, I mean, he says, how would we know that they, he wasn't emboldening them to, to do more? And it's, to be fair, it's something that I think the defense counsel raised at the, uh, at the trial, that there was concerns that the undercover agent was, he didn't, he didn't hatch this plot, he didn't come up with it, but the argument from the defense lawyers was that he may have been creating a situation where it could go further than it might have if it hadn't been for him. That was part of the argument. Obviously, that argument was put to the jury, mm -hmm. and they, they didn't buy it. They thought that there was enough of this plot that was started with and ended with um, the guys that are in prison that they should be convicted. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We also have a question from Facebook from Jeff Spanton. He says their expert is saying that there should be that there is no such thing as a laser. Then makes it sound preposterous. I don't understand how he can not know that these things do exist. These are absolute lies. One of the lines that has, has stuck with me and really struck me at the time, um, Mr. Jasser says, I think we need a laser. We need a military-grade laser. What in the world is that? I don't know. Exactly. There's no such thing. Okay. Um, and so I, I think that is a good indication of how sophisticated this plan ever got. I think what the um, lawyer was referring to was that the, uh, this idea that there's some kind of this military grade laser that could be readily um, available to the suspects in this case where they could just zap the train tracks um, and break like, them. <laughs> like you see in the movies, <laughs> right? Right. Yeah. Um, and I, and I, my understanding was, and correct me if I'm wrong, that's what he was referring to, that it's not that easy to sort of obtain access to that kind of military grade lasers. Um. And, they, and also just this idea that they were kind of all over the place, yeah. right? They had, yeah. let's do it this way, let's do it that way. There was even a reference, it's not in our documentary, but a reference to the fact that they wanted to blow up a volcano in a national park in, in the United States and have this volcano erupt, which obviously is, is not, doesn't sound very realistic. And I think that was his point, that they were just really all over the place. We also have a question from Twitter, from Premier Trading 21. Um, where do we go to have our questions answered? Well, come to the right place. Um, what is the status of the high-level AQ terrorists in the U.S. mentioned in the documentary who is intend, I believe it means intent, um, on carrying out a worse incident than 9-11? By AQ, I think he means Al-Qaeda. Um, so we talked about, uh, our story discussed the fact that the undercover officer was concerned because during the, the course of his investigation, he realized that there was a American sleeper um, from Al-Qaeda um, who was sort of laying low and waiting to target at a given point. And um, the undercover told us that one of his biggest regrets was that he wasn't able to track down who that person was. Um, so the update we have on that, as of three weeks ago or so when we interviewed him, they he's still, still out there. Yeah, he's, he's still out there as far as he knows. And it was one of the big disappointments, I think, for him that they couldn't find out more about him and potentially stop him. But it's also perhaps not a big surprise yeah. that there are people out yeah. there wanting to do this. And, and obviously, they try and catch as many of them as they can. And as far as we know, he's still out there. And, and as you said, see, to me, when I heard that, um, obviously, any kind of concrete 
uh, proof of something like that happening is distressing for everyone. Um, but, you know, if you follow world politics, I kind of assume that that kind of threat is very real in the U.S. and against the West. Um, so part of me wasn't necessarily surprised by that, which is why I think FBI continues to engage in a lot of these undercover investigation because there is that real fear that someone is out there actively waiting for the right moment to, to hurt people. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a real thing. So um, those are all the questions I have. And uh, if someone wants to uh, watch our show, um, if you missed it, it's uh, on our YouTube channel, as I said, www.youtube.com slash CBC Fifth. And thank you. Uh, if you have any other questions, you can always write to us at uh, fifthtips at cbc.ca. And uh, hope you'll tune in next Friday for our next show.